Hello and welcome to another tutorial of CSS and HTML. In this tutorial, we will going to continue with some of the text properties that we did not cover in the last tutorial. One of the first text property that we would like to cover here is called text decoration. Text decoration does the same thing as the underline tag in HTML, just like we have uh, to apply the bold and to apply the italics. For italics, we use font style, and for a bold, we use font weight. Therefore, to apply underline, we use text decoration. So if I would like to apply the underline property to H2, which is my the heading, my heading right up top, I can use text decoration, and then I can use a value of underline. Now, in CSS, besides underline, you can also apply overline, which just runs a line over the text. Or you can do line through, which applies a strike through kind of an effect. Um, and some browsers also support one extra property of text decoration called blink that makes your text blink. Uh, but not all browsers support that property. So after applying the text decoration underline property, if I would like to um, just have a look at in the run mode, and you have will notice that the fruits, which is my heading right up top, is now being underlined. So that's how you can be applying the underlying effect. Now we will going to apply a couple of more properties, one to H2 and one to H4. The property that I would like to introduce next is called text transform. The text transform property can be used to apply or change the text to lowercase or uppercase uh, or none. Those are the three property values. So if I change this to uppercase, and now if I run it in the browser, now h2 should appear in uppercase. And, oh, I misspelled here. Let me fix the spelling and then refresh the page again. Here we go. So here we were able to display that in the uppercase. Now similarly, we have another property here in h4. The property is called font variant. The font variant has one of the property values called small caps. What small cap property does, it converts everything into uppercase. However, what was originally in uppercase, it will going to display that in smaller font size than what was already in uppercase. So what was already in uppercase will be in larger font size. What was already in lowercase will still appear in uppercase, but in a smaller font size. So let's have a look at this. Uh, and I applied that on H4. So as you can see, H4, Fruits I Love, appears like this. Now let me refresh and notice how everything converts to uppercase. But in the word Fruits and Love, Whatever letters were already in lowercase will now going to appear in a smaller font size. So um, that's basically what these two properties do. Now we will going to work with another property called the float property. But before we get to do that, I would like to make some modifications to the underline, which is the UL down here. Okay. I would like to apply a background color to this entire group of UL, which holds bananas, mangoes, chicos, oranges. So in order to do that, I'm gonna to go to the fruits.css where I have given it a color under an ID called list. So if I apply the background property, background color property, let's say orange, and if I come back to fruits and let me refresh this in a web page, and here we go you can see that it applies a background color to this. Similarly, I can go back to fruits.css and make changes to the color that I'm applying. So if I would like to apply the white color on the orange background, then here I can go and see the difference. So whichever color I want to apply, I can apply it in this file and I can come back here and just refresh and I'll be able to see that color. 
Besides that, if you notice that this paragraph or this division is taking up, this, this, uh, this area is taking up the entire region from one corner to the other. What I would like to basically do is the next paragraph in line, which is fruits come in various colors and shape, I would like to expand that paragraph to make it multi-line. And then I would like this paragraph to span around, just like you would see in several desktop publishing articles or web pages where things wrap around um, the other things. So I would like to apply that wrap around effect. So there are a couple of things that I would like to achieve here. First of all, I would like to change this paragraph that is over here, down here, which is only has one word in it, which is fruits, uh, one statement in it. I would like to expand that to several statements. And in order to do that, I'm going to just make my life a little bit easier by using copy paste. So I've just expanded this paragraph over and over and over so that it is multiple lines. After making some changes, I've saved this document and this is how it looks like at this point in time. So you can see that it looks like a paragraph. So what I would like to do is I would like this paragraph to rather appear on the right hand side of uh, the, the list of the fruits. So I would like to go back here to my list and I would like to put it in a division. This is how we can divide up a document into multiple portions. That basically is the main reason behind division tag because division tag allows you to divide up your document into regions. So I would like to define this region over here that holds the list of all the tags, um, the list of all the fruits. So now after I have divided this portion in a division, then I would like to use one property on this division. The property that I'm about to use is an inline property and the property is called float. If I give a property value left to the float, notice the difference in here, okay? Notice how this division is floating to the left of the paragraph. And that basically what this effect does that it only occupies that much of a space as the content that it holds and the rest of the stuff automatically just wraps around. Now let me go back to this list and add some more fruits to the list and you will notice how automatically this will going to expand. So now if I go back here and run my program, here you can see that it has expanded in list. So that's what basically the float effect does. Well, in the next tutorial, we're going to expand on this idea and we're going to learn a little bit more about some of the other properties. That's all for now. Take care. Have a good one.